Okay, in this tutorial, we're going to look at the topic of inline graphics. This is covered in Chapter 5 on page 142 in Figure 514. So to illustrate this, I'm going to jump over to Microsoft Word, a program that I would suspect most people viewing this tutorial are very well acquainted with. This is just a standard, typical word processing program. And one of the things that we often do in Word is we like to insert pictures into our documents. Well, I've gone ahead and placed my cursor in the middle of the second paragraph, you can see it blinking there. And I'm going to choose Insert Picture from File and, and put an image here, and we're going to see what Microsoft, do, uh, Microsoft Word does with that command. So I'm going to go up to the main menu and choose Insert, Photo, Picture from File, and I'm going to select an image that I have in this folder here called Inline Graphic and choose Insert. And Microsoft Word inserts the image and the way that it does it, it treats the image as though it were simply a character, a letter, or even a word or a sentence. It assesses how wide the image is, and if there's not enough available space from the point of the cursor to the right edge of the margin, then it inserts a line break, which it has done here, and then the text continues to flow off of the baseline of the image, which they share. So really, a word processor treats a graphic and a picture just as though it was text. And in doing so, it creates this sort of awkward break between the end of the sentence here and the beginning of where the narrative portion of this document picks up again. That break creates an awkward flow for the person consuming the content of the page. And we'd like to get rid of that awkwardness and make the image and the text flow together a little bit more harmoniously. So to do that, we want to convert the inline graphic to a floated graphic. So I'm going to go up to my options ribbon here at the top of the page. And I have two buttons here, one called position and one called wrap text. And if I go to the position button, I'm presented with a lot of options here on how I can float this image in regard to the text surrounding it. I can put it at the top of the page, floating it left, floating it right, floating it in the center. I can keep it in the middle of the page and do the same thing, float it left, float it center, float it right. Or I can put it at the bottom of the page and do the same thing, left, center, or right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and choose the, uh, the center right float position, and we'll see what that does. And instantly, Microsoft has made an adjustment. It's converted the inline graphic to one that is now floated, and the net result is uh, what I would say is a, is a much better presentation, visual presentation to the reader. So in addition to this, we can snazz things up a little bit. I don't know about you, but I usually like to add a border around my images, so I'm going to pick a border and we'll put a border around it. So floating an image is a very basic thing that you can do to improve uh, the harmony that exists between graphics and text on a page.